What's up guys, I'm Zach with Wired Customs and today I'm gonna to go over basic wiring for these early Fords, the six volt, how it works. Okay, so welcome to my dry erase board right here. Um, I'm gonna go over exactly the difference between six volt and 12 volt. Um, a lot of little things people don't understand with the six volt, and I'm gonna show you actually what we do on paper uh, when we do a 12 volt conversion kit. So um, we're gonna go over very simple here. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to give some uh, generic analogies in the process to help you understand. So six volts. So pretty simple. We're gonna start with the battery positive, negative. Okay, I'm no Picasso, but this should help you get an idea of what we're working with. So that's Batman right there. And uh, we're gonna have a chassis. Okay, so here's our chassis. Okay, and just, just for my own humor here, here we go. Then we're gonna have headlights okay there's a headlight right there and this is gonna be a 6 volt so 6 volt oh let's go over how just generically how 6 volts work uh, on the system here so what we have is a 6 volt battery here's the chassis this is our headlights um, like I said I'm not a Picasso uh, maybe if I sign it I'll get famous one day but we're gonna move on. So, six volt battery. It's usually positive ground. I'm talking about early Fords. I'm an early Ford guy. Uh, that's what I work on mostly. So, uh, all the examples I'm gonna give you, how it's wired, the whole process, it's all about, uh, or it's all relative to early Fords, okay? So, we have, it's a positive ground. Six volt positive ground for early Fords. So, our wire here is gonna to go to the chassis, okay? So, back then, they didn't have, or so back then. So let's say, let's let's okay. Let's put us in a time frame here. Time frame: 1930 to about 1953. Okay, that's the time zone that I'm working in. Um, so this doesn't apply to everything in the whole wide world. It applies to early Fords. 1930 to 1953. Okay, okay. So we have six volts going to ground, right here to the chassis. So that means the whole frame, the body, the hood, the fenders, everything is going to have six volts. If you went to a voltmeter and you started prying around on the chassis, you'll get 12 volts. Uh, if you are, you'll get six volts on the chassis, you'll get six volts on the fender, you'll get six volts if, if, if all the grounds are good, you'll get six volts on the lug nuts, okay? Everything has six volts, then the headlight is connected to the chassis for the positive then the ground so let's go ahead and put that in a different color the ground is going to be connected to the battery okay so let's not overcomplicate this it's pretty much a battery just backwards it's pretty much a modern type car just backwards so don't let it overcomplicate it to you so everything is supplied on the whole body of the vehicle with the six volts. The ground switch is after the load, okay? Back then, relays were really, really expensive. Um, they're really intricate back then. And Ford, his main goal was to make sure the cars were as cheap as possible so the average person could afford it. So. Um, instead of putting six really expensive relays on there, he gave the whole chassis um, voltage. Uh, since the chassis has voltage, then it goes to the load before it comes back into the ground. Everything that's going to be switched is going to be switched from the ground side, this black side right here. Okay, so to turn this headlight on and off, what we're going to do is add a switch right here. So this is a switch. Okay, here's my switch. 
off on. So it disconnects the ground, the headlights are off. Okay, so let's change the switch to on. Now the headlights are on, okay? On, off, that's what's going on. Now they put the switch on the ground side because you don't need a relay for a six volts. If it was on the power side, you would need a relay. So whatever that load is, so headlights is our example, this switch is after the load, so all our voltage goes through, hits the load. After the load, the voltage is extremely low. The amps are a lot lower. Then it goes through the switch, then back to the battery. So the switch isn't getting a bunch of load through it. It's not gonna burn up the switch. The switch isn't gonna get super, super hot. Now these switches are getting hot just because they're still in the circuit of the load, okay? So with this lower voltage, you can make that happen. Uh, what can, I wouldn't consider it super unsafe since uh, they did that a lot back then. Everyone had cars, but certain circuits were what I would consider to be somewhat unsafe like the horn. Um, I don't like having contacts uh, on loads like that, but we'll go over that at a different time. This is the simple video. So this is how the setup works for these early Fords. The six volts, everything has power. The ground comes back through the switch and back to the battery. So let's take this out example as this is a running driving vehicle right here. And now we're gonna switch it over to 12 volts. So what the first thing I'm gonna do when I go to 12 volts is obviously disconnect the battery. But since this is just a drawing, what I'm gonna do is just change the voltage right here. So we have 12 volts now. What we have to do is switch the wires around. We can't put 12 volts to the chassis. Um, we don't want 12 volts going to the chassis. So we're going to take our wires off and we're going to change our switches around. So this brings us into a little bit more detail here. And let's get rid of this nasty name right here, okay? Okay, so now we're at 12 volts. We want the car to be a little bit safer. Usually when you do a 12 volt conversion, you're putting in fuses, you're putting in relays. All this type of stuff makes your vehicle safer. Now it's not unsafe as a six volt, but there's always a chance that something's gonna go wrong on one of these switches. Could possibly catch fire in your vehicle, could possibly just burn some wires up, or worst case scenario, burn your car to the ground. Um, but most 12 volt conversions are for adding accessories, adding alarms, adding electric locks. Um, a lot more load requires a lot more charge, and we're not gonna get that charge out of generator, we're gonna get that charge out of alternator. So you can step up the alternator, or you can step up your whole game. Um, I prefer stepping up my whole game, considering I can do this whole switch, and put an alternator that looks like a generator, then outside from that, you would never know that the car is 12 volts. It would still look like a classy original car. This just gets our starter, our starter is gonna turn over faster. You're gonna create compression faster. It's not gonna give you more compression, but it's just gonna create it in a shorter period of time. Here's an example of a six volt starting up compared to a 12 volt starting up. Okay. So huge difference. Both were the exact same vehicle. All I did was just change the voltage on the car. Now, how we're going to do this 12 volt conversion? Now, we're going to take the ground and run it to the chassis. Okay? Positive is going to go through the other direction. We can do this with the original wiring harness on the vehicle. We don't need a new wiring harness. What you need to change when you do the 12 volt conversion is battery cables, the starter cable, um, any type of ground cables that you're using all needs to be redone. Um, you cannot use the 6 volt cables for any of those. Um, so what you have to change when you make this conversion cable wise is just the battery plus wire going to the starter solenoid. You gotta change the starter solenoid of course. We won't go down the rabbit hole of what you need to change but when it comes to cables just the battery plus, the battery negative, and the charging wire. Do never ever ever reuse those cables going from 6 to 12 and always put a good ground on your motor, a new ground, brand fresh new. Okay, So when we do this conversion here, we switch it over 12 volts, now to switch these headlights. 
So I'm going to bring you over here and I'm going to show you uh, just a, a second diagram here to get this to that safely. We're going to do it different because we can't have our switch on the 12 volt side of the circuit. There's too many amps going through the switch. That is unsafe. The switch can't go there. Then how are we going to switch everything from the chassis ground? That's impossible. We're going to turn everything off and everything on every single time? I don't think so. So here's how we're going to do that. So let's put a, our little dimmer switch that's in the floor, okay? Looks like a boat, I guess. Dimmer switch. Okay, there's your dimmer switch. Um, let's make this a little bit bigger because the dimmer switch has three prongs on it. So there's a spade, there's a spade, there's a spade. But these lines are, are the connectors on the dimmer switch. It has three spades. Okay, so this one is usually the power in. Now let's put a little forward switch up here. Um, little box, then a um, little knob here right okay so there's our Ford headlight switch what this switch is doing is it has a lot of we can't run all the voltage through the switch either we don't want this switch to get hot now on a 6 volt this switch is taking all the power when we switch it over to 12 volt this switch is no longer taking the power so originally it has a wire from here to there that's the power wire and this just switches it from high to low so this is high, that is low for the floor switch, okay? This is the switch you step on on the floor. I just want to make sure I explain that good enough. So that's what it used to do. We're going to change that. We're going to break this connection. We're going to bring this wire over to our relay, and I'm not going to draw anything crazy. This is just a box, okay? That's a relay. That's your headlight switch. So, here's our relay. We're going to bring this power wire down to the relay. It's going to go in the relay. That inside the relay, actually I'll draw this out for you. So, these proportions aren't right, okay? Here, then this is our little coil. Boom, there's our coil. Then here's our switch. then our power wire is going to come out the relay and that's going to go into I'll draw that in a different color red let's do red so here's our power wire and that's going to come out and go into the power of the floor switch so when you turn the relay on I wish I had a yellow one that would make more sense Okay. power. Then this is going to go to ground here. There's our ground. Okay, so here's a terrible drawing of the relay and I drew the relay backwards. So I'm trying to think of how to draw and how to explain it at the same time. So bear with me. Okay. Okay, there. I drew the relay backwards. So moving forward, Let's explain it step by step, what's all going on here since my drawing isn't Picasso, okay? Headlight switch up here, on and off. When you turn the headlights on, boom, that sends that power down here to the relay. It goes through a little coil in the relay and goes to ground. So this switch is taking very, very low voltage, very, very low amps. When this comes on, it triggers the relay. It goes from off, where it's at now, to on, okay? So that makes that connection. And this power fused, get right fused up there to help explain it. Power fused, short wire coming straight from the battery or straight from the starter solenoid. Power fuse is going to come on and that's going to go to our floor switch. Here's our floor switch. Okay, you push the button, it sends the voltage over to high. You click on the button again with your foot on the floor, it goes to low, it sends to the low side of the bulb circuit. Okay, so really not that much is actually changing going on here, but what we're doing is just controlling that power from a relay now 
instead of the power going through the switch. Switch is dangerous getting all the power. We want the switch off the power. There's too many connections inside of a switch and it's too loose. It's not a solid wire connection as soon as you push the button. It's usually brass on brass inside of a switch. So when we get a lot of amps and brass, it could possibly melt the switch. It could possibly get the switch so hot it starts melting the wires around it. Uh, melting insulation underneath your dash. All sorts of nightmares. So doing the 12 volt conversion takes that power off of this switch, making it safer, puts it through the relay. So a 12 volt conversion is more than I want my car to start faster. It's way more than just that. We're actually making this car electrically safer. Okay. Um, a lot of people like to argue about these conversions online and all I have to say about that is it's your choice. You do whatever you want, but this is the information and this is just a small piece of that information. We're, we're going to be doing a lot more than just this on these 12 volt conversions, but this is why I recommend them so much, especially since you can put a power master alternator on it that looks like a generator and nothing physically visibly changes. So you can put a power master alternator on it and nothing will aesthetically or appearance change on the vehicle. It'll be more reliable and safer than six volts.